Good morning, everybody. I thought I'd come out and watch the sunrise and do my video. <laughs> I was going to do my video today, and I thought, well, you know what? It'd be really nice to come out and do it while we watch the sunrise. So I'm out here along the Indian River on Merritt Island. Anyway, I'm back, guys. Um, anyway, I, I just thought it was such a pretty scenery out. I'd, you know, come out and sit and do my video out here today. Um, but anyway, I do videos, and what I do it in, on is to bring awareness of, you know, dabbling into the occult and, you know, being into the paranormal. Um, I used to be in the paranormal, and I'm sure people that sees this probably already knows that. Um, but for those that haven't, I was into the paranormal for many years and uh, I was an investigator. I had my own paranormal uh, team. I was the founder of a team, Dead Time Paranormal, in Central Florida. Um, but anyway, I ended up leaving the occult and getting out of it when I found out what these spirits truly were. Um, you know, I did know there was always. Uh, I always believed in my mind that there was also a such thing as what they call mimicking, where a spirit would mimic, like say for instance, a small child or someone's dead mother or, you know, something like that to get the person to accept them or to invite them into their lives. Um, because when we open a door to the demonic, say for instance, if we tell these spirits, okay, you can come and show, show me a sign, you know, that you're really here. You know, we're not, we can't limit the access that we give them when we give them access. <laughs> um, the only one that can close that door is Jesus and him alone. Uh, we have to come to Jesus. Um, once we've opened that door, say for instance, if we started having a lot of problems, um, you know, going into demonic oppression, um, and we decide, okay, well, we want to leave all this, you know, and we want to get away from these spirits um, that are tormenting us. The only way to do it is to close the door. Well, the only way for us to close that door is actually for us to come to Jesus, decide to believe on him and to trust in him um, as our Lord and Savior. And we have to um, get forgiveness for that, repent of it, and then we need to um, you know, just try to, um, to get out of the occult. You know, if we do all that, then we'll have the authority in Jesus to be able to, um, cast these demons out. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, um, I, like I said, that was one thing that I used to believe in was mimicking, but I also believed that, you know, spirits of, uh, you know, earthbound human spirits were also here, which that was false. Um, because it, you know, the Bible does tell us that we're no longer here um, after we die. That to, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And um, we also see the story of Lazarus, uh, and the beggar and the rich man in Luke 16, I believe it's in. But, um, but anyway, so another thing that, you know, is interesting to think of is how do people know that they can actually genuinely trust these spirits. Um, say for instance, if you go into a court of law and you have to go to court against someone that you don't even know who they are, just say for instance, if you're the judge and you get this person before you, you look at their record and you look at their history and you look at their credibility, who they are, what's their character like, have they been known to lie, um, you know, it, how do I know this person's telling the truth? And we also look at the evidence brought forth. We look at the alibi, you know, and all this. Well, anyway, it's kind of similar to how you act in everyday life. You know, if you're going to hire somebody for a job, you, you kind of look at their, their credibility and their character. Um, but with these spirits, it's like, you know, what is different within, within the paranormal community is when a spirit shows a sign, I mean, usually the evidence that they get is, you know, what kind of uh, activity is going on in what parts of the house. Say, for instance, if someone died in the bedroom, 
of a house, they think, oh, okay, if something happens in there, automatically they assume that there's a spirit there, an earthbound spirit of someone that died in that room. They make that connection and assume that it's true. Well, say for instance, usually, and uh, this is as far as I've ever known, is whenever somebody collects EVP, they do EVP analysis, usually they'll get like a single word. They'll get a name or they'll get something like that, you know? It's like with that evidence, how do you know? You know what I mean? How would a person even assume that it's truly the truth? You know, how do they know that the spirit is telling the truth? How do they know that just because it makes a noise in a certain room or um, demonstrates the sound of a female, you know, they'll put together a couple of little clues, but these spirits, evil spirits, can do that. It's so easy for them. There's nothing stopping them. Um, people think, well, if I just tell it, you know, to show itself in the name of Jesus, Jesus does not tell us in the Bible to do that. That's nowhere in the Bible. Um, you know, I've never seen anywhere in the Bible or the scriptures where we're told to tell a demonic spirit to perform in the name of Jesus or to do anything in the name of Jesus except to cast them out. Um, Jesus might have asked uh, the one, uh, what was his name? But if you notice, the answer was legion. We are many. You know, Jesus might have, you know, that might be in the scriptures to show us something too. Um, but otherwise, there's, there's nothing to telling us to do this stuff, you know, to ask questions and all this. So anyway, um, why would it be that they automatically assume that these spirits are telling the truth? Is there some kind of ghost lie detector test or, you know, what is it <laughs> that makes them think it's the truth? And believe me, I know what it's like because I felt the same way. And you just, you want to believe that that's so-and-so, you know, because it gives us a false sense of peace thinking that our dead mother is still here or, you know, that dead person is still here or, you know, or whatever. It just gives us a false sense of peace or hope, um, you know, that they're still here. And, um, and I still say that it's really because people want to avoid the reality of hell. Because say, for instance, if it was someone that you know of that was not a believer, and then that person, you know, all of a sudden you're getting voices from these people that you knew were not believers. Say, for instance, if it's a family member that you knew was not a believer, automatically you're going to assume, well, guess what? There must not be no hell. Or maybe we must not go straight to hell. You know, it just gives us a false, uh, you know, peace about hell. You know, that's the thing. The enemy, that's one of the main deceptions with it. The enemy wants us to believe that. You know, he wants us to believe that, number one, there's no such thing as a devil. Number two, um, you know, he wants us to believe in earthbound spirits. He wants us to believe that there's no hell. Um, he wants us to believe that we don't have to walk in holiness, that God does not require us to forsake sin. Um, there's so many lies, you know, but anyway, um, I'm totally going off subject too. But, um, but anyway, that was one thing that we need to look at is the credibility part. How do we know that they are who they say they are? You know, we can't prove that. Um, see, then there's, there's a video that I really want to show everybody. Um, well, I just want you to hear what was said by the Constantinos. This is a paranormal team um, that, of investigators, and it was a husband and wife. And they used to, um, you know, review EVP um, recordings for people. Um, actually, I used to follow them. I used to really like them. Um, I looked up to them. I thought that they were, uh, how do I say this, professionals in the field and all this. But uh, they, there was a tragedy that happened. Um, the husband, I guess... Uh, the husband and wife was fighting. Um, some say that the husband was abusive. Some say the wife was abusive. Well, evidently they both were abusive. They had anger issues, um, which also uh, is a, a part of demonic oppression. Um, anytime that a person is influenced by demonic spirits, 
to the point of controlling them or causing them to do things, um, having anger issues, um, obsession, addictions, um, jealousy that, you know, causes rage, things like that. That's demonic. Um, but anyway, they, they used to do EVP analysis and everything. Well, I guess the husband ended up um, killing the wife and then he killed himself. So pretty much, I mean, as soon as I heard it, I knew what happened. I knew that it had to do with these spirits, you know, um, dabbling into the occult period. Um, it does cause a lot of these problems, demonic oppression, you know, things that come with that. Um, but anyway, in this video clip, you'll hear what their take was on what happens after we die. And I'll go ahead and insert that here. This is Mark Constantino. When we make our transition and cross over, I believe the first realization we are going to come to is that there, there was no right religion that opens the gate to a better place. Rather, it's going to be the type of person you are why you lived your life here. This is Debbie Constantino. My thoughts on life after death and what's next. I consider myself to be a Buddhist as far as my lifestyle. I'm a firm believer in karma. I also am a firm believer in God and demons. I absolutely believe there's some, some place after this. I also believe that when we die, we get a lot of help me, a lot of, you know, get out. But I, I believe when we die, we're kind of one with God. We get a little taste of God, we get a taste of what heaven's like, we get a taste of forgiveness. Don't let these ideas manipulate you. Your mind should be an open book to your own thought process. This will be you thinking of life instead of death, as it's all about what's next in this life we don't fully understand. Okay, if you noticed, Mark said on that clip, he says, um... The first realization we will come to when we make our transition over to the other side is that there is there were no right religion to open the gate to a better place. You know, what? I mean, <laughs> we know that came from the enemy. You know, the ideas that they got in their heads, I'm sure were from these answers that they were getting from these EVPs. You know... The enemy would want us to believe that, you know, um, a lot of people believe that, you know, all religions lead to heaven, all, re you know, and all this stuff, but that's not true. Jesus said that you cannot come to the Father except by him. He also says he's the way, the truth, and the life. You know, he's the only one we can go to in order to get to heaven. And he will make it possible for every human being that's under the eight that's over the age of accountability will have um, their choice, their chance. God will make sure to it. I don't care if he comes and tells them himself or he sends an angel. Um, he will let them know. You know, people say, "Well, what about people that's died that lives out in the in the woods and you know in, in some parts of the country." You know, God will reveal himself to them. <laughs> He's able. <laughs> um, so anyway, then uh, Debbie says she believes in karma, Buddhism, and a believer in God and demons. Now, I wonder where she gets that idea from. Because it's not from the Bible. Because she's got all these other ideas mixed in with it. God, anyway, and demons, and that when we die, we will become one with God. That's a, that is totally from the enemy. <laughs> you know, that is that oneness um, belief that everybody is one with God in their universe and creation. It's a new age. Um, but anyway, she was a believer in that, evidently. And then, after they speak, then Nick says, he's the, he's the narrator of the song and the singer, um, don't let these ideas manipulate you. Your mind should be an open book to your own thought process. Yeah, we really need to not let that manipulate us. And our, we have free will to be able to decide and to choose, um, you know, are we going to believe in God or not? Are we going to believe in Jesus? Um... You see, that's not, it, it's nonsense. It really is. Um, 
it's the same thing as relativism. What's good for you is good for is not good for that person. Um, no matter what the real truth is, they they believe in no absolute truth. You know, that there's no absolute truth in in one way, one religion. They believe that it's all just you know, whatever's good for this person, you know, is good for this person. <laughs> you know, no matter what. Um, let's see. And Mark also in, in the same interview. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. The clip of Mark and Debbie on this video was actually from an interview that they did. And also in that interview, Mark had mentioned uh, that he prefers to leave God and religion out of it. Um, there's no way to abandon or escape the reality of the spiritual world, which includes our Creator. There's no way to leave it out. So, um... They also, in the paranormal, they come up with um, non-biblical ways to, uh, how do I say this, get people to go over to the other side, to lead people to the light. This insinuates uh, post-mortem salvation, that people can get saved after they die. And that is false, it's not biblical, and it's not true. Um, anyway, I'll go ahead and show you the clip here. Oh, merciful God, take pity on those souls who have no particular friends and intercessors. We would recommend them to Thee, who, either through the negligence of those who are alive or through the length of time, are forgotten. Be their friends, and by all, spare them, O Lord, and remember them through Your own mercy. When, other, when others forget to appeal to it, let yeah. not the souls which thou hast created be parted from thee, their creator. May the souls that think right now of these beautiful memories of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Let them shed their attachments, their dead body. Not dead. Not dead. Live. Live. Yeah, not dead, live. Do you see the angel? Dead. The souls that have crossed, turn around and call out to your brethren. The other souls that were trapped here, behind you. Other souls assist. Yep. Yes. What do you see? No further work needs to be done on my part. It's already being done. Thank you for those that have helped. Where will I see you at the end? welcome okay um, this belief is something that is huge in the paranormal field um, the ghost hunters they 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 truly believe that they have the power okay um, more power than Jesus evidently to get people to cross over into heaven because they say that they're going to the light um, after they die um, and they believe that these spirits that they're communi communicating with um, are somehow stuck here and they can't get to heaven but it takes them to get them there you know which is it's ludicrous when you think about it um, the Bible does not teach after a uh, salvation after death um, actually if you look at Proverbs eleven seven, it says when a wicked man dieth his expectation shall perish and the hope of unjust then perish so there's no hope for the unjust or the wicked man there's no hope for them after they die um, if you think about the the story of the beggar and the um, the beggar and the rich man um, when the rich man went to hell 
he was yelling and he was asking Abraham to go tell his brothers, you know, that, um, you know, to not to come to this awful place because he was in hell. He didn't say anything of himself coming out of that place. You see, when once we die and say, for instance, if a person is in hell, they don't have hope anymore. They personally do not have no hope. They know that they are there forever, for eternity. Um, there was no mention of him saying, can I come out of this place, Father Abraham? Can you save me? There was no mention of that at all. He only asked for a drop of water. Um, let's see. And we have to look at all scripture. Okay, because I noticed another thing is that the, the paranormal community borrow from the biblical worldview. They'll borrow from it. They'll say things like, um, you know, they'll try to cast spirits out in the name of Jesus and everything. And But when you look at the scripture, it says in 2 Timothy, it says, um, in 3.16, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You know, all scripture, not just bits and parts of it. Um, so we have to look at all scripture. Um, let's see. Now, this is what they said about... Hold on. Sorry. There was... That reminds me. There's this part, like I was talking about, about how people would go and they try to use their own ways to clear these spirits out and all this stuff well you know it's it's so ironic because you'll see these mediums now the bible strictly forbids people to be a medium or a psychic um strictly forbids it even says they should be put to death <laughs> you know same thing as a witch um but you'll see these mediums go and try to you know, wield around the name of Jesus or use salt and say, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That stuff is totally, totally unbiblical. Will not work. And they prove it on TV when they're doing it. It doesn't work. Um, actually, I'm going to show you a clip. I'll be right when back. I feel threatened. I'll hold my hand up. And I'll do, if you're not of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you're not welcome here. What I'm doing is, is I'm using my energy to pull it out of here. <laughs> He's got my throat, guys. Give me some water, please. Okay, but did you see how this medium uses, uh, you know, to get to protect herself from this evil spirit, using the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you know, in a very unbiblical way. Uh, then she admits, she admits it, um, she is using her energy to pull it out of here. <laughs> and then she begins to feel like she's being choked. Well, go figure, okay? Um, and right before this, right before this happens, um, she actually lights up a smudging stick of sage and says she's having to circle around herself and... Um, but if you notice, that was also ineffective. She did that, and she sat there and said, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. You know, she's saying that she's doing it in their name, but yet she's saying that she's the one that's pulling it out of there. She's using her energy. You know, we are nothing. We can do nothing without Jesus Christ. Nothing without Him. So that that's a that's a no-brainer. You know, when you watch it and you see it's not working, and then she's starting to get choked. You know, come on. That shows that it did. It wasn't going to work. Um, let's see. It's just getting crazy out there in this world. I mean, it's like there's no way to fight the enemy if we don't identify who he is. I mean, more importantly, we need to identify who Christ is. Um, he is the one. He is our Savior. You know, he's our deliverer. He's our healer. He is our, he's, he should be the Lord of our life. Okay. Um, but the enemy truly, it's, it, he's, he tries so hard to deceive people in so many different ways. 
I mean, people, the ideas that people have is, it's just, there's crazy ideas. I mean, now looking back at it, that's why I do these videos, is like, how could I believe that stuff? How, why, how could I believe that back then? I mean, I was just really so deceived, you know? Um, but anyway, I mean, people have got to where they will do anything, um, you know, believe anything but the truth. You know, the truth is what really sets us free. You know, any of these other lies does not set us free. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and show you a clip real quick. <laughs> Be right back. The polarity that we see as evil is what we've been calling demons for centuries. A demon is essentially a thought that was created through the vibration of lack. Instead of being the vibration of source consciousness, it is the absence of that vibration. It is a thought that has been focused on long enough that it has become a thought form. A thought form that is capable of creating its own ideas, its own desires, its own prerogatives. Sermon series, we're going to learn more about the truth of God's word with an exciting game show called, Did God Really Say That? Is it there? But do you see what I mean? They'll believe, they'll, they'll, they'll swallow any lie, <laughs> any lie, um, just to try to avoid and suppress the truth. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and close this for now. Um, I just want to let you know that the truth is what sets us free. Um, and that these, uh, being involved in the paranormal uh, community and being involved in these practices is dangerous. It really, really is. It's demonic spirits posing as our dead loved ones. So anyway, my, the sun's come up now, but I'll go ahead and try to let you see it in a minute. I think we're behind the bushes over there, but anyway, it's beautiful. It was really pretty over the water. But anyway, God bless you guys. Love you. Bye-bye.